Yes, I'm about to take you on an incredible journey through time and space. Who remembers the Reaper Rat Rod Summit? I bet a lot of you guys thought that I had actually gotten rid of this beautiful machine, but indeed I have not. This is hydro dipped and painted by Pit Dog Hydro. I've had this body from Proline for a very, very long time. And in fact, I've had this Traxxas Summit for a very long time. These are 40 series mud slingers from RC four wheel drive on the Poison Spider aluminum rims. These are leading edge machine, that's the company's call, that's the company's name, uh, these uh, axle drive shafts. They actually don't, uh, I don't believe they're in business anymore. This thing has seen better days, I'll tell you what. It has ent entertained millions and millions upon tens of millions of people on this channel. And uh, I'll tell you, I think it's time. Since it is at minus 35 degrees Celsius outside at the time of this filming, yes, I'm very happy for you. It's warm where you live, but the rest of us are freezing our butts off and there's no way we can go outside in RC right now. It's a great opportunity to go ahead and to see how we can bring things back from the dead. The Rat Rod Reaper, back from the dead. So let's have a look at this. The last time here, the last time I used this, I blew one of the brushed motors on this side. And listen to this, it sounds horrible. Crunchy. So I think that that pinion is just slipping on this spur gear right here. And for those in the hobby world that are out there the, that know the Traxxas Summit, this is supposed to be a one tenth scale machine, but I would say it's closer to a one eighth scale size. But it's really hard to say because who knows? Maybe the the model that they were modeling this after was enormous. <laughs> but that's always been the joke with the Traxxas Summit is that it is far larger than a one tenth scale. Now this does have an ESC on it. You can see I put an external BEC on here to handle all the extra power when it needed. When the servos were calling for more power because of these bigger tires, the BEC is able to reroute from the battery and give it the proper amount of uh, current. Now this runs normally on a uh, two battery system. It runs on 4S LiPo, two on this side, two on the other. I know, so beautiful, but yet it looks like it wasn't taken care of at all. But indeed, it has just been sitting on the shelf for a very, very long time. <sighs> <laughs> That's what she said. Uh, <laughs> so today, uh, sad, sad for me is that I went down to look for uh, Kershaw Designs um, from Dan Fisher that used to run Kershaw Designs and the K Kershaw Design site was gone. And it's been gone for years. I guess Dan used to make these uh, dual motor mount plates, which I love. I think they're fantastic. Um, and I went to go and buy the motors off of him, but he passed away several years ago from cancer. So that is a loss to the RC community, even though I'm just finding out. I feel a little bit like a boob about that, but I bet there's many other people out there that didn't know that either. He did some great work. Well, instead of putting in dual motors on here, and I was thinking like I would replace this, get rid of like the, the stock ESC on here, maybe I was going to do uh, dual brushless, and then I thought, well, then I'd have to get like dual brushless ESCs, and if you look on the inside, there is not a lot of room, but I have had a monster Tekken motor for years sitting, just waiting to be used, and look at this. Look at the KV rating on this. It's not on that side. <laughs> yes, it is. 2250 right there. 2250 KV. This can size is enormous. Way larger than the other one that's in there. And if I only use one, that way I can fit a new ESC down on that spot and uh, get rid of this old fella, replace it out with a new ESC and uh, start bringing this back from the dead. Yeah, the last time I used this years ago was uh, in a mud video, and I ended up cooking one of the motors, and it was, it was quite a smoke show. And that is going to need to be cut out. But the secret with this is if you just kind of start moving that around, it'll start loosening up that screw, and then you'll be able to back it off easier if I can get it some bite in there. Ah, there we go. Beautiful. As long as you can move the motor, it kind of cracks open that um, pinch that it has on the screw there. 
And I'll try to move it back and forth. And then of course that just goes to show it was that pinion on the spur gear. Actually for my last video being a mud video with this, uh, it's actually in pretty darn good shape. In fact, you guys are probably wondering right now, where did you get the white arms? Uh, these are RPM arms. They were made, I don't know if they still make them anymore. I have had this truck for so long. These are basically undyed arms. You could dye them the color you wanted. Uh, and RPM, of course, being a leading name in the uh, plastics when you would have uh, indestructible, unless you into the freezing cold, uh, indestructible plastic basically. Uh, who remembers me doing the Traxxas Summit, the floating Traxxas Summit video, where we had the tires that were floating, this whole truck was on top of the water, had some great tunes with it, I think that was back in 2012. This was the very first crossover mainstream vehicle uh, to hit the RC market. I remember when Traxxas dropped this bomb on everybody and, and it seems so regular now and usual all these years later, uh, eight years to be specific, uh, to have a two-stage transmission in a monster truck. This not only was being sold as a, uh, a, a crawler, you could crawl over things, which was unusual. You wouldn't get a truck this size that would go slow, but it would also go at a fairly decent clip that you could bash. So it was a bash slash crawler hybrid truck. And, you know, still pretty darn popular. Not as popular as they used to be, um, but I still have mine because I love it. So first thing I got to do is remove this receiver box off of here. Uh, but even though I said that's the first thing I'll do, let's actually make it the second. Let's take this off and have a look. Oh, <laughs> years of gunk and what you're seeing is old grease in there because you'd always put a blob of grease around the edge to keep that uh, transmitter from getting any water on the inside. I'll have to clean out this entire gross box. Look at this, whatever congealed substance that is. <laughs> Let's get this out of here. Yeah, I would always dab big globs of marine grease in there. Get it in focus here for you guys. So I wasn't getting any leaks from the water. You can see it works, but years later, ugh, you're gonna pay the penalty. It's not too bad. It just looks like a bunch of baby snot all hardened up. So for beginners that are afraid of doing this kind of thing, all I'm doing is following the wire to where the channel is. You can see this is the first channel here, so I'm just going to remove that, noting that the signal wire, which is the bright wire, is towards the antenna when it's upside down, so it's not a big deal. Yep, look at this. I completely cooked the end of this in the last video. That is the ground wire that has melted right out of the, uh, the sheathing right there. I'm so glad I decided to change this out. Now I gotta clean all that gunk out. But upon further inspection, I can see that my BEC looks relatively unscathed. Uh, so I'm actually gonna recover the BEC. I don't think I'm gonna need the BEC in here. I very well might. Um, but instead of putting in like an, an eight scale RX system in here, I'm gonna use the RX4 which is instead of the RX-8. But I want to see how this does because this doesn't have any motor limit on the brush, brushless, pardon me. And it's got a pretty decent ESC or BEC in there already. So with a giant motor like that, even though it's for eight scale racing, I think it will perform well even with the RX-4. I could be proved wrong, but we'll see. All right, now after about an hour of being off camera, I've actually gone ahead and done quite a bit of the soldering, 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 whatever you want to call it, <laughs> wherever you're from in the world, and uh, done some electronics works already. I'm going to be running the batteries in series, uh, which basically means I'm going to be doubling up the battery power. So I've got two S LiPo and a two S LiPo for a four S LiPo. I made this little connector so you can kind of see how it goes. This one, of course, going to the battery. This 
one going to the battery and this one would be going to the ESC. Now here is the speed control and I decided to change my mind and actually just throw the BEC on there even though it's got a high voltage BEC uh, because it would be easier for me to do it now than to muck about with it later when I need it. Now I've left my leads entirely too long. I actually don't need them to be that long at all but I usually like to place my speed control and then kind of eyeball it, you know, with, I can mount up the motor and you can see I only need a few inches there of wire. So I'm gonna take that back and heat up the uh, sold soldering iron again. <laughs> you guys have always fucked me up on that because you're all from all over the world. So you all say it differently, kind of like Tamiya, Tamaya, Tamiya, oh dang it. Now I've got to be really careful with this motor, right? Because this motor mount isn't actually the proper mount for this <laughs> setup. But as you can see, I've added a screw which kind of wedges this motor into place. And I've got an excellent um, small, small, maybe one millimeter gap in between the pinion and that spur. So running it back and forth. Beautiful, no weird sounds at all. And this shouldn't move whatsoever. Now to prevent this motor from cogging, which is kind of like a jittering movement when the comm is trying to find its position inside for rotation, this sensor wire will actually sense it and tell the motor where to start so I won't get any kind of hopping at a slow speed. We get that with a brushless motor when it's sensorless. This being censored will avoid it. Now, although this Tekken motor is not waterproof, so I won't be taking this through any melting snow, but as you know, there is no melting snow at the moment, I still want to add some grease to the open ports. This is the censored cable port, as well as the fan port up on this side here, because if you don't do that, you can have water seep past and give you problems inside the ESC. Yes, it's supposed to be element proof, but there are these little areas that can cause a problem, so they include the grease. Now in order for me to stick this ESC down, I'm going to have to have a nice clean surface so that double sided tape has an opportunity to stick. Just place that on there, stick it down nice and firm. Well, after lots of effort and time today, even though the video has gone by fairly quick, I have actually salvaged the summit and I am ready to plug it in for the first time. You can see I've got the connector for series uh, for both of my batteries hooked up. A very tidy wiring job here. I'd like to mention to anybody that's running a BEC that remember when you power the BEC directly or the, the receiver directly from the BEC that's plugged in, that's coming straight from the battery, remove the red wire from your ESC because the red wire from this plug right here normally powers the receiver, but because I'm running a BEC, it's going to automatically power it. Now, I did take the red wire out of this, which means I'm going to still be able to use my on and off switch. If you guys ever run something like this and realize that your on off switch isn't working, that's because you're double powering it. So let's actually get this all plugged in. Make sure my old radio is on. Green light. <laughs> Here's where everything could go up in smoke if I'm not careful. Three, two, one. No smoking? I like that. I should have put up a no smoking sign here. So my sensor cable is plugged in and ready. I'm going to turn on my ESC, which I still need to calibrate. Yeah, do I have power to my servos? Oh, they just need to be reversed. And then I don't even know what motor type I have it set on here. Does it go forward? <laughs> yeah! Back from the dead! <laughs> yes! Now we finally get to give it a little bit of a test. Two speed transmission, remote locking differentials. Oh yeah, welcome back! <laughs> Such a beautiful body too, I crashed it and bashed it and mangled it. But I'll tell you what, it's been one of the coolest looking bodies I've ever had in the studio, that's for sure. 
Well, I cannot believe we breathed life back into it, my friends. I need a bigger space to open it up, of course, but two-stage transmission there gonna allow me to do the crawling and the snow bashing. I probably need to replace the slipper clutch on this just because it is so well loved, I should say. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, guys. Hopefully you've made a comment down below. Smash that like button for the return of the Reaper Rat Rod. And I wanna know, if you've been watching RC Adventures for a long time, which is your favorite RC out of all of the ones we've had on the show? Post it up down below and we'll see you in the next episode of RC Adventures. Now get outside and have fun with RC, or if it's too darn cold stop procrastinating and do the maintenance like you're supposed to we'll see you guys bye for now <laughs>